Welcome back. This is part three of our look at the Godot tile map node. This time around, we're going to be looking at how to do animated tiles, which is something a lot of people have requested, and also how to work with isometric tile maps. Okay, let's get started. So to start with, I've selected this tile set from Open Game Art, which has some animated tiles to do some shimmering water effects. Uh, I'm not going to bother with the waterfalls. Too many tiles to deal with. So we're just going to make a little island with some shimmering water around it. So go ahead and grab this from Open Game Art. I'll have the link below. Now I've actually gone ahead and sliced all these into individual tiles. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can use uh, you can use the region rectangle to define which parts you want in your sprites. I did that because I wanted some flexibility to show you some different uh, things to do. So I just thought it was going to be useful to have some different tiles. So I basically took all these sprites and I just dragged them into the window here to get my to start making my tile set. So these are all the island ones. I don't care about those. But this one, water one, water two, and water three. These two, these three are the ones that I'm going to animate. So in the folder, I have water one has five frames of animation, water two has five frames of animation, and water three has five frames of animation. So each of these is the first frame of its animation. Okay, so just save that and convert it into uh, a tile set like normal. And then we'll be able to go over and make our tile map. Okay, here's our tile map. And I've just drawn out a little island. And then you see I've used the water one, water two, and water three tiles and placed them in a few places around the island where I want the shimmering water to appear. Now I've also added, if you notice when we run this, these tiles are fairly small. So the picture is going to be small. So I've added a camera 2D just so that we will zoom in, use that to zoom in a little so we can see the map a little bit better when we run it. Now we're going to add an animation player to our scene. And this is what we're going to use to animate our tiles. So we're going to create a new animation. I'm just going to call it water. And then we need to start adding tracks. And I'm going to add a track for each of the three water tile animations that I want to do. So let's do the first one. So we go to our tile map. And right here is where we've chosen our tile set that we're using. And water one is tile number zero in the set. So if I click the right arrow here, I can see all the individual tiles in the tile set and their properties. And so for tile number zero, its texture is what I want to animate. So I'm going to click the key next to it to make a keyframe. And now we have our first frame set. Now the length of our animation right now is one and our animation has five tiles. So we should be fine. I think if we just do two steps in between each one. So now the second frame, we want to go into our animated water and find water one frame number two, drop that in the texture, hit a keyframe, repeat again for the third one and repeat again for the fourth one. Don't forget to hit the key each time after you change the image and hit the key. Okay, so there's our animation. Let's make it loop and hit play. And there we go. The places that I've put a water one tile are now showing the little animation. And we're just going to repeat that for the other three. Okay, so here I've just done the same thing with the other two animated tiles. And you can see they're each playing their animation. If you, anytime you add more of these, you're going to see the animation on that tile because we're animating that tile in the tile set, so it will be animated wherever it is. 
So hopefully that helps you go and make some animated tiles in your tile map. Just for your information, there is a second technique for doing this that uses a shader instead of the animation player. I will probably be doing a video separately for that. Shaders are a whole separate topic of conversation. So whenever that gets done, I'll try and remember to link that below so you can check that out as well. All right, let's go on to isometric maps. The most complicated thing about an isometric map can be the art itself. If you don't have a good art pack that hasn't been drawn in a consistent style and perspective, it can get really difficult to, to use it properly. So for this demo, I've selected Kenny's isometric tower defense art pack. So all the tiles are now in the folder here, and we just want to make our tile set. And we can do that the same way we've done our tile sets before. We're just going to drag all the sprites into the scene and they will get created with their correct names taken from the file name so they're easy to keep track of. And that's all you got to do. Don't worry about anything else. Now, one thing I will point out here is if we take a look at one of these tiles, if you look at the texture, the texture is 124 pixels wide and 123 pixels tall. And that's how much space the whole tile takes up. And this is actually going to be true for all the tiles, even the, the flat ones like this. They're all the same size. But the size of our grid is going to be based on this diamond-shaped portion here. That's the, that's the grid part of your tile map. And so you have to get the right setting on your tile map. And we're going to talk about how to do that next. So if we go over to our new scene and we add a tile map to it. So we're going to change the mode to isometric. And if you look at it now, it doesn't look isometric. It looks like it's just top down because we need to change the size. Well, let's load our tile set so we can see what's going to happen when we use it. So I'm going to go and grab my top down tile set. Okay. And here's my tiles. Let's just grab a plain ground one. And you can see we're not placing these at all lined up because we don't have our tile size set correctly. And that's because it's set to 64 by 64. Now, when you're doing isometric, there's a lot of different ways of doing isometric. Uh, some artists will draw pure isometric tiles, which means that the width is twice the height, like that. So if you're tile is 64 pixels across it, it or I mean sorry 128 pixels across it's 64 tall uh, that does not match these tiles quite as you can see they don't line up when you place them and that's because of again the size now if you look at Kenny's art pack when he released it he included in the download a file listing the proper size for the grid. And this is what that file had in it. 124 by 123 is the size of the images, and 120 by 98 should be the size of the tiles. Well, I think that that is not correct, because if we put in here 120 by 98, oops, 98, then you're going to see that these tiles don't quite don't line up at all with that size. So you can see when we zoom in that tile shape is no is not very close at all to matching the size of the the tile image. So you can experiment with this and this is what I did was play around with getting things closer by changing the Y size, C60 made it too far, and it turns out that 120 by 70 makes things line up just right. And this is actually a pretty common hassle that you have to go through when you're getting uh, isometric art off the 
internet and you're not quite sure or there's some mistake in the size and you have to play around with it for a while until you get things working correctly. Now our tiles are lining up right, but you might have noticed that the highlight box where the where the tiles being placed is kind of above where the tile actually goes. And we can fix that by just telling it to use the center of the tile as the origin. Then everything is lined up just right on the correct perspective. So, so now we have our tile map set up and ready to go. And I'm going to name this tile map level 1 because this is the ground level because we want to have taller structures that rise up above this like towers and things like that. Okay, so let's say you have some tiles here on the ground and you want to place some towers, right? We have all of these tiles for making towers that would rise up above the ground. We obviously don't want to place them here because that's going to replace the tile that you're clicking on, right? And I want the ground to stay there. So we want to have a second tile map that is on top of the first one. So the easiest way to do that is to duplicate this. I'm going to hit Control Command D or Control D. And now we made a second map. Uh, that map also has the same tiles on it. So if I hide level one, you can see we need to erase all of these on level two. Okay. Now I want to place this tower. Now if I click it, it's just going to sort of be on top of the other one because it's being drawn on top. It's higher in the node, right? If it was this order, you wouldn't see it because level one would be getting drawn on top. But I need to change its location because it's higher. It should look like it's shifted you know, onto this tile, not inside the tile. And so we want to take our second level tile map and we want to offset it a little bit. And we can do that because a, a tile map is just a node 2D. It has position information, so we can shift this. And I want to shift it upwards, so that's a negative amount. And again, from experimentation, I found that about 28 pixels makes it shift just enough to look like it is centered on that tile. So you can see it looks like that tower is right there. So basically each level that you add, if we duplicate this and add another one, because we want another layer on our tower, then we need to take that one and we need to shift level three, negative 28 times two. And then that will let us draw on here and look like we're stacking on top. Show you one more. We'll take this one and this will be negative 28 times three. And we'll put the top on the top of the tower there. And now we have a nice stacked up tower looking like it is in the right location. Now this can be all sorts of fun to play around with. So here's a map that I went ahead and made because I was enjoying myself, made it cover the whole screen. I have made four additional levels of towers sticking up in various places. And it looks, when you run it, it looks like this. And I even did a little animation on one of the tiles like in the previous section, just so you could see what it looks like with a different kind of tile. Now the important thing to remember about an isometric tile map is there's nothing different about the tile map from an orthogonal one. The only difference is in how it's drawn and the perspective of the tiles. The way that the map works is exactly the same. For example, if we run this, and we use the code that we put in the previous example to tell us what tile we're on when we click. You'll see that when I click over here in the corner, this is 0, 0. This is the 0, 0 tile. So this is x increasing as I go along the tiles. And this is y decreasing as I go upwards. So if you imagine it was just a square grid that was rotated, you're still moving in x, y coordinates. And so if you have a character on the map and you have them at a certain tile, 
say they're right here at 8-0, and you tell them to move one tile to the right, they will move to there, to square number 9-0. And it'll work exactly the same. Your code doesn't even need to know that you're on an isometric map. So I hope you enjoyed going through this three-part examination of the tile map node. It's very powerful, can be used for a lot of things. We've only really barely scratched the surface at this point, but I encourage you to open it up and experiment with it and see what you can make it do. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.